Hi guys and gals, welcome back to the channel and a, uh, a little update while I just drive over to my fiance's house in my Astra Twin Top. Um, so if you've seen my last video, the very, very, very sad, very upsetting video for me personally, where I've um, sold Sylvia. For anybody who doesn't know, Sylvia was my 1986 Mark II Cavalier GLSI, which I'd owned for 13 and a half years. And she got rear-ended in the snow uh, at the back end of 2022. So a year and a couple of months ago. And uh, I tried to repair her. I was gonna restore her, I was gonna get her back on the road. But in the end, it was just getting to the point where I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna let her go. I'm gonna sell her to somebody who's got the time, the skills, the money to be able to invest into her to get it done properly. So I sold her, basically, I sold her. <laughs> and if you, if you see the last video, you'll see in a lot more detail why I sold her and um, just explaining the reasons, etc. So I'm not gonna go into it too much on this video. This video, I want to talk about the future. So onwards and upwards, onwards and upwards. So I have bought another car and I did hint at it in my last video. Now only my close friends and family know anything about this car and I'm not gonna reveal it just yet. If you wanna find out what the car is, you'll have to stick around. So please consider subscribing. Please do like the videos. Please browse the channel and have a look at my other videos which are on the channel. And as I said, please do consider subscribing because I have got a lot more cool retro Vauxhall and Opal content to come. So I'm just gonna give you just a very brief little update on what my thought process is at the moment. So I've got this other car which I've just bought. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, as I say, but I want to spend some money on that, I want to spend some time on that to get it as good as I can get it. So, with that said, I am now tempted to sell one, possibly two, possibly three of my existing cars. Now, this car that I'm driving now is my Astra Twin Top, which is my 2009 Astra Twin Top, and it is actually my main number one daily driver now if I do sell it I'm gonna be left in a position where I haven't got a daily driver anymore so my thought process is get Owen back on the road once this sells Owen will be back as my main daily driver Owen is my gold mark II Cavalier for anybody who doesn't know if you want to browse the channel you'll see that there's loads of videos on Owen um, he's even world famous I've got friends around the world who know about Owen, including in Brazil and all over the place. So a lot of people know, know of Owen all over the place. And um, so my main plan is probably to get him back on the road as my main daily driver. I have currently got this Astra up for sale. Um, I've got it on uh, Marketplace on Facebook. I've not had many inquiries yet because it's got a short MOT. It's uh, 24th of March. Uh, no it's not, it's 24th of February, I should say, today, as I'm recording this. And the MOT runs out uh, 12th of April. So my plan is maybe spend a little money on this to get any jobs done that it might need for the MOT. Get a fresh MOT on it and then I can sell it with a full 12 month MOT. If I get it done early, I might be able to sell it with 13 months MOT. So that's, that's like my first plan. So plan of action number one, get any jobs done on this twin top, get a fresh MOT and try and get it sold. Plan number two, get Owen back on the road, get him taxed. I mean, he's roadworthy, he's got a valid MOT. I just took him off a road and put him on sawn for the winter. So all that I need to do is just tax him and I could use him tomorrow if I wanted to, but there's no point because I'd lose the full month of tax. So that's why I'm thinking, wait until March, which is only next Friday, and I could tax it. But then I think there's no point for now 
until this is sold because then I'm paying another lot of tax on a car but yeah I don't really need to use him so I may as well get the Astra done and sold first then tax him once this is sold so that's that's one of the plans so then I think about my other cars that I've got my other various projects well the Nova that is not going to get sold <laughs> I have to say right now from the beginning of the video the Nova is not going to get sold one I've owned it for 20 years this year it's part of the family I've always said because of how much I love Novas that I would always always have a Nova so I don't want to sell the Nova my girlfriend fiance she would not allow me to sell it because she's very very fond of Novas she had a lot of uh, fun in Novas back in the day, back in the teenage years and early 20s. So she's got a lot, a lot of fond memories of Novas and she says, no matter what, I'm not allowed to sell it. So that's not going anywhere. My Manta, well, the welding that the Manta needs is gonna to have to be done by a professional garage because it's on the front chassis legs, the front chassis rails. It's where the front subframe bolts on, which includes the, the mount for the engine so i'm not confident enough in my own skills my own ability my own welding skills to do that work myself so i'm currently looking for a garage a car restoration place that is good enough to be able to do the welding to a, a good enough quality for me to be happy now i could probably take it to an mot garage that does basic welding and they'd get it to an MOT standard, but I, I want better than that. I want it restored properly. Now I know it's gonna cost money. I know it's gonna be, you know, it could be a grand, it might even cost 1500 quid, might even cost two grand. I don't know, I'm guessing. You know, but because I didn't pay market value for it when I bought it, I'm thinking to myself, it's worth me spending a bit of money on it because I'm not going to lose money because I bought it cheap enough when I bought it to allow for whatever it's going to cost to have it done so that's that's my train of thought on the Manta the Vectra right the Vectra GSI that I've got what do I do you see one thought I had was to keep the Vectra get it on the road as another daily driver that could actually replace this the Astra as my main daily driver because then it means I'm keeping the miles off Owen I'm keeping the wear and tear off Owen and it means I could actually keep the Vectra and have it on the road as a, a cool retro daily without having to sell it but and this is the but I know that it's going to need a fair bit of work it's going to need some brake pipes it's got a power steering leak it's got a rear suspension spring that's snapped. Uh, it's probably going to need four new tyres because they're not in the best of conditions. And two, at least two of them have gone flat and I think they've cracked around the tyre walls. Um, it's going to need a bit of welding doing because there's some welding needs doing, which I showed on a previous video. So when I start adding it all up and working it all out, the Vectra does actually need quite a lot of work doing and I think to myself time is the main issue now again I could pay a garage to do it for me but how much is that going to cost and then how much is the car going to be worth when it's done so I'm in two minds at the moment whether to just advertise the Vectra get it sold to somebody else who can do the work and restore it get it back on the road themselves or whether I keep it and do the work myself but then I think well I've got this new car that I've just bought, I want to concentrate on that. I've got Owen, I've got the Nova, you know, and I've got the others which I haven't even mentioned yet. So then I think to myself, it kind of makes sense just to sell the Vectra, let somebody else do the work, let somebody else have a, have a project, because I've got too many, and this is the problem, I've got too many projects. Now, if, if I did YouTube as a full-time job, you know, if this was my full-time job doing YouTube, then I could, I could do it because I could spend all day, every day restoring my cars and getting them all done and getting them all sorted 
doing loads of content for the channel you know but unfortunately I'm not in that position where YouTube is my main source of income in fact YouTube doesn't earn me any money at all because I've only got you know 360 odd subscribers and I thank every one of you who has subscribed you know but this is why I'd love to get more subscribers I'd love to get to that magical thousand subscribers and above because then I could start to earn a bit of advertising revenue from the channel which would then in turn give me a bit of extra money towards getting my cars done and then if it got to the point where YouTube was earning me a decent wage I could give up my current job and I could spend all my time concentrating on the YouTube channel I mean I think to be honest that is the ultimate dream that would be the ultimate dream you know but I'm a realist and I know that restoring old Vauxhalls like I am is probably not going to give us you know enough content to be able to make a full-time living from from YouTube so you know I have to be a realist and realize that it's probably not going to happen you know I do this more as a hobby rather than a a way of uh, trying to earn money if I got to that stage where I could earn money from it fantastic you know it'd be brilliant but uh, as things stand I haven't got the time I've got a full-time job you know I work in car sales I work weekends I have two days a week off and my two days that I have off I spend a lot of time with my fiance I try and spend time with my son when I can you know so I've got other things in life over and above my cars and that's why I think to myself you know there has to be a cut-off point where I think I'm gonna to have to sell something and that's why I think I'm gonna to have to sell my Vectra so I really do think that my Vectra is gonna be going up for sale soon I then think about my Mark 1 Cavalier now my Mark 1 Cav it don't really cost me anything other than the insurance because it's tax exempt it's MOT exempt but at the moment I still can't use it because it's still got this annoying running problem with the engine now I want to try and get it running right so that when the weather starts to get a bit better the weather starts to get a bit warmer I can I can start to use it as um, as one of me you know daily usable cars because again as things stand at the moment not being able to use it because it's not running right it's just sat there not doing anything and it's a crying shame that I've got this really cool old retro 1977 car that is so fun to drive when it works but because it's not currently working it's just sat there doing nothing so I have to be honest I have been tempted to put the Mark 1 up for sale as well again let me know in the comments what do you think now it's a red top it's been converted to a Manta 5 speed gearbox so that it could run the red top you know it's fully stripped out it's got the bucket seats and and it is a quick car it's you know it's well it's nippy put it that way it's got what about 150 horsepower standard from the engine but it weighs hardly anything because again as I say it's fully stripped out it's got racing seats bucket seats it's got no rear seats you know it's got no headline and it's got no door cards or anything so it weighs next to nothing and that's one of the reasons why it's you know it's so fun to drive but it's also so frustrating that I can't get it running right so that again is another mission that I'm on with to try and you know get it running to a point where I can actually use the thing so what other cars have we got well we've got my Cavalier convertible which I which I nicknamed Brad so I've got my Mark II Cavalier convertible so just try to see what this idiot's doing here are they actually pulling in so I can actually get past or what right they have actually decided to pull in and let me get past thank goodness because I'm afraid of being stuck behind them but yeah that, that then leaves me with Brad my Mark II Cavalier convertible now I have got a mate that was interested in buying it so I have to admit I am tempted to sell that as well but then on, on another side 
I wanted Brad to be a car that I could make completely my own. Customise it, customise the exterior. It's already got a unique interior. I know I ain't really done any videos on that yet, so it's a car that I could do a lot of content for the channel. And it's something that's totally different to anything else that I've got. You know, it's a proper soft top. I mean, one of the problems I've got with, with this Astra that I'm driving is I bought it because I wanted a convertible. But the problem is with a twin top is that they are notorious for having roof problems. And again, if you've seen the channel, you'll see that I have had problems with the roof on this. And I have, I have had problems with the roof on this. So much so that I'm not 100% confident to be able to put the roof down at any point because I don't know if it'll come back up again and this is one of the other reasons why I'm trying to sell this because I can't really use it in the in the way that I intended it to be used because I can't trust the roof currently you know whereas if I kept my calf convertible I've got my soft top it's a completely mechanical manually folded roof you know it's nice and simple easy to use no electronics no ecus no um, hydraulic systems no switches no wires no cabling you know it's just completely old school undo a couple of clips fold it down into the back manually jobs a badger you know what i mean so because i really do want to still have a convertible because I love driving around in the summer with the roof down it does make me think that I really should keep that get it on the road, get it MOT'd, you know and actually use it and enjoy it but again it's a time factor it's the, it's the same time factor again, you know it, it, needs, it needs work, it needs paint work it needs the brakes piping up um, it needs whatever else it's I mean most of the work it needs is cosmetic to be fair because it's already had a lot of work done to it uh, mechanically it's already had most of most of the things that can be replaced have been replaced but currently it's not it's not actually running I can't get the engine to start so that's another mission that I'm on <laughs> is to get it up and running and and the engine actually working it has run in the past so I do I do know that the engine is good it's just that at the moment I can't physically get it to start and it might be just a lack of fuel it might be a problem with the fuel pump it did have an old alarm system on and the old alarm system um, I don't know if it's got a mobiliser built in maybe the immobilizers cutting the ignition off I don't know I ain't really explored all avenues to be honest I could do with uh, seeing if I've got spark at the spark plugs and see if it'll fire with some easy start sprayed into the uh, into the ignition, not ignition, um, injection system into the inlet, and see if it'll uh, see if it'll actually start with some easy start. Because as I say at the moment, I don't know what the issue is. Might be something as simple as it's got no fuel. Might be something as simple as the fuel pump relay is not turning the fuel pump on. You know, there's there's loads of very basic things it could be, but again, it's the whole time factor, and this is the problem I've got. It's the time, and this again is why I've been thinking of selling my Vectra, been you know thinking of selling the Cavalier convertible. You know, and, and one reason, if I'm absolutely honest, I have actually even considered selling the Manta, even though I've just been talking about getting it restored properly. There is still a part of my mind that thinks maybe I should sell the Manta as well. So what else have I got? What other cars have I got? Well, I think I've covered it. I think that's it. I think I've covered them all. I've talked about this one, the Astra. I've talked about Owen. I've talked about the Mark 1 Cav. I've talked about the Manta. I've talked about the Nova. And I've talked about the Convertible. The only one I've not talked about is the one that I've only just bought. But uh, that will come in a later video. <laughs> that will come in a later video when I do the big, uh, big reveal. But uh, as I say, close friends, family, they already know about it because I've already posted pictures and um, been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. 
I hate this road sometimes. This is what they call Winnett's Pass out in Derbyshire, if, you, if you're wondering. And a lot of people who drive over here, like these ones in front, haven't got a clue how to drive on it. Hence why we're like currently doing 15 mile an hour. It's so frustrating when you get stuck behind people on this road. Problem is, it's a very touristy area. You get a lot of tourists. And for them, it might be the first time they've ever driven on this road. So because of that, they haven't got a clue how to drive on it. <laughs> But um, anyway, that's my little rant just to finish off the video. So thanks for watching. Uh, as I say, please like, browse, subscribe. Stick around for more because there will be a lot more content to come. As I've, uh, as I've kept saying, I'm going to try and uh, make sure that I keep doing more regular updates. I know I've not done many up regular updates recently, but that's mainly because it's been winter and the weather's been crap and uh, I'm just looking forward to, it, to get to the spring and uh, start having lighter nights obviously in March we put the clocks forward so I have an extra hour of light at night I mean, it's 20 past 6 now and it's already you know it's still a little bit daylight now so over these next few weeks it's going to be getting lighter on a on an afternoon look at this idiot I don't think he has a clue how to drive this Fiesta in front <laughs> Oh, I can smell he's got burning clutch smell. Yeah, definitely he's not very good at driving. He's probably only just passed his test. But uh, anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Cheers for watching, and I shall uh, catch you in the next one. Laters, guys.